gone through all the switches and checked the rate of motion. All the switches seem good. I don't see any problems. I'm going to put some deoxid on all the connectors and have a look and make sure that the connections are good. The terminals are good. Everything seems okay on this. No issues. I have removed the CRT and put it in a safe place. There's no need to have the CRT in this unit anymore. I don't want to risk damaging the uh, the glass. There's no need for that. Also, the uh, I thought the rubber was breaking down when I removed it. I found as I was as I was cleaning up this area here, I said that uh, the stuff that's on the rubber it actually uh, I smelled it. It smelled familiar. It was actually bearing grease. Somebody had uh, put bearing grease on the rubber, and actually it was still supple as a result of that. And when I cleaned up the rubber, it wasn't degrading in any way, shape, or form. And the rubber will actually. I don't have it here right now. I put it up. Oh, here it is. The rubber is still supple. There's still a little grease in the crevices there. And it still bends and it's flexible. And it will be introduced into the unit when it's put back together. So that's pretty cool. Um, I was very careful about removing the back. I didn't stress the tube or damage anything. I have started going through the unit component by component and doing my test. Um, obviously all the electrolytics were annotated in red. Um, the two high voltage ones that I'm not going to be able to test on the uh, IT11 are just going to be seriously replaced. So I've, I've annotated them as blue right here. They're going to go. I've got uh, my strategy for the cans are already in play. Uh, I've, I've got a, a, a situation lined up for that. Some of the um, capacitors, I'm sorry, some of the resistors are wrapped around um, inductors or they're in parallel with inductors or literally literally wrapped around, I should say. There's some, some interesting stuff that's going on here. And it's not, not easy to see right now, but you can see that there's a, a resistor right here that, that literally has a, a coil wrapped around it. And... Um, there's no, no sense in trying to ruin that for the purpose of testing. I'm going to assume that it's good. We'll test it in circuit and see if we're going to go with that. Uh, I've marked that with a question mark. The 33 micro Henry to 3.3K. And we're going to leave that alone. Uh, some obviously test low if the impedance on the other side of the circuit is lower than the resistor. And that's fine too. This is a possibility with this 28 going to the vertical position pot. Again, not overly concerned. I may have the opportunity to take that out of circuit and test it. Some of them are genuinely bad, and that's fine too. Uh, particularly, uh, this precision one here seems to be a bit out of tolerance, so I may throw a new uh, uh, precision resistor in here. That 330 is up to 358. Some of them gone way high. I still have a lot more work to do. Um, in, 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 in documenting all these resistors before I put in my order. Uh, some of them I grabbed as opportunity, you know, when I was right there doing it. But I have a way to go to get those resistors done. Um, looking at Mr. Carlson's work on a similar model, and he says that the, um, he replaced all these IMPs that he noticed a significant or noticeable amount of leakage through these capacitors. And I, fa I found that interesting, and I'd like to replicate that. So. I'm not going to be so quick to, to swap them out just yet, but what I'm going to do, at least, is, is uh, pull them out at least one by one. I'm going to throw them up on the Genrad and, and see what I got, and then I'm going to uh, leak down test them in my, my IT11 right there. You know, my IT11, especially on the uh, paper mica setting, is, is really sensitive down to about uh, one or two uh, microamps. So if there's if there's any amount of leakage on on these uh, on these IMP uh, capacitors, uh, you could be sure it's going to see it. Um, so we're going to see what happens with that. A lot of stuff that we're going to do in preparation while I wait for some parts to arrive. And I got to tell you the um, the replacement capacitors for the for the higher rated voltages, the electrolytics for this uh, oscilloscope, they definitely don't come cheap. So it's 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 going to be um, it's going to be a little steep. To recap this unit, no doubt, because we're looking at seven of them, and some of them are upwards of uh, uh, thirteen to seventeen dollars a piece. 
to get yourself a, a quality quality one, not the Chinese knockoffs. I wouldn't bother doing a restoration with one of those, you know, to, to, to make sure that if you're going to do this, you're going to do it right. Interesting note, within this entire unit, and it has been thoroughly inspected, um, there's corrosion that only affects these two red wires, its endpoints, and whatever is pulled back from uh, the shielding. As you can see, it's green. Uh, the wires have a, a white, um, white sort of uh, substance on them. Uh, the wires are separate. They're not part of the same circuit. You can see they're tied off different endpoints. On here, you can see the green there as well. On the board here, uh, nowhere else. Um, I'm going to remove them and replace them. Uh, nothing dripped down onto this area on the board. Uh, adjacent connections don't exhibit this. I wonder if perhaps for these two connections they were replaced, the wrong solder was used, maybe acid solder was used there. So I'm going to clean that up. thought I'd point that out. When I saw that, I did another uh, inspection of the board to see if this was found elsewhere. It was not. I'm also going to point out, uh, because I saw it, in another video that um, there are no rounded resistors um, in this unit. Uh, all the resistors have a, uh, a sharp end to them, a squared off end. I have gotten now to the what I will call the second level of the schematic and obviously all roads lead to the CRT until such a time as all roads lead to the power supply and I'm finding a um, a higher than expected failure rate for um, for the resistors. Not that that's a big deal, you know, just more work to do, I suppose. I'll, I'll swap them out as necessary. But this is why this this is why this is done, you know, this is why I do this. Don't simply just do a, a recap job, it's not sufficient. Um, we're gonna make sure that this uh, machine is gonna run right because, you know, the expectation is, is that once I get this going, you know, and working, uh, the service life should be should be pretty long. I shouldn't have to, to come back into this unit and, and worry about having to fix stuff. So if I go over everything properly the first time, I shouldn't have to wonder what I missed the second time around. So I've gotten uh, just this far now, and, and I'm working uh, from the endpoints, obviously, or the inputs or the outputs, depending on how you look at it, uh, back towards the CRT uh, through the system. Um, Next one will be the horizontal input, and then finally from the power supply outward to whatever was missed to provide the uh, the, the uh, um, DC rails, and that should cover the entire unit. And then I'll uh, calculate some of the ones that are on the fence, and at that point I'll determine, make a list of what's going to need replacing, get some deoxid in these components, and then I go through with my uh, my uh, um, IM11 up there and check the sweep. On, on the potentiometers to make sure they're doing good. It's a particular area of concern that I've highlighted on the schematic, and this is my resistor schematic, but I'm using it anyway. Um, I put it right here. It shows a um, 102 watt resistor uh, connected to pin seven off of the 6X4 rectifier, and I don't see it here. And this happens to be one of the um, capacitors that was replaced so that's always a cause for concern and basically here it shows it not connected so the assumption would be that you know initially the person who did this job did it wrong and did not have the resistor in line uh, the problem is that when you look at the schematic you see that the uh, expected output voltage here um, on pin 7 would be 430 volts going through strangely this 100 ohm 2 watt resistor but up here we see uh, uh, voltages before we go through uh, any of the other resistors at 450 volts and we can't possibly get a voltage increase before the resistor so I'm thinking that uh, this may be an addition where uh, there may be an error on this schematic diagram I'm gonna have to consult with some folks and see what's going on here my opinion is is that the schematic is wrong and this is actually correct uh, just by the the math alone tells me that that something's something's here that isn't right it would make me wonder why why this would be employed here anyway and in looking at this and, and what we're seeing here is this is actually tied off to this pin this this pin is unused on 
uh, this tube. So, so this is just a tie point, but the way it made it in the schematic was it would come off this pin uh, jumper across this 100 ohm to here, and then this would connect to the original point down here to this capacitor. It just doesn't doesn't look like like that was the case. But I'm definitely going to research it. So I marked it as missing, annotated that, and we'll see what's going on here. I finally finished getting through the rest of the resistors in the oscilloscope and annotated them on the paper. I could see a pretty consistent failure rate on these resistors and I just accepted the fact that a lot of them were going to need replacing. Uh, some of the ones that I went through I looked at and decided that I'm just going to uh, bring them up to a higher wattage rating. Uh, some of them that sat across uh, tubes like this, I decided that I was going to use a uh, um, more precise uh, res matched resistor for them. That was just a better idea. And what I did was I went to my uh, supplier and I got the uh, part numbers for those resistors. That's going to be tied into an order for my Decade resistor box that I already have the part numbers for. I'm going to ship all that out at once so I could get them all in at the same time. Once these parts come back, uh, along with the uh, capacitor order that's also going out, I'll be able to do all the work on this. It's going to be pretty extensive. This is going to be quite a project to get this all back in line. So I'll wait for the parts and I'll probably be doing uh, uh, some testing on some of these non-electrolytic capacitors. Uh, also uh, taking care of these uh, potentiometers and testing them as well.